Hey everybody, welcome back to Naked and Not Afraid. Today it's gonna be 98 degrees. It's July here in the south, and that means that you're gonna face dehydration very quickly. So today's challenge, find water. Now of course, finding water might be easy, might be very difficult, it might be impossible, depending on where you are in the world. And some of the questions that come up are, like how much water do you need a day? That really depends, okay? I would say in general, about two quarts, if you're just not doing anything. Of course, it's gonna depend on the temperature, the humidity, your exertion levels, your body size, your metabolism, all sorts of stuff. Another thing is, you wanna have a clean source of water, but in an emergency, in an absolute emergency, just drink whatever water you can get your mouth around because dehydration, okay, is gonna be worse than any parasite infection you might get later. So, you know, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't, but definitely hydration is most important and dehydration will kill you really quickly. So the body loses water not only through urine, but also obviously through sweating and also through your breath. And you wanna make sure that you're replenishing whatever water is lost during the course of the day or you'll have severe dehydration, which can lead to everything from fast heart rate to fast breathing to low blood pressure and ultimately coma and death. You can tell if you're getting severely dehydrated by a couple of symptoms, like if you have a headache, if you're really, really sore and tired, um, if all of a sudden you actually stop sweating, that's a really bad thing, that starts getting into heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Um, some other things that you might not think about are called the sternal press. If you press your sternum and let go, uh, it should return to pink pretty quickly. Same thing with the nail beds. If you press on your fingernail, it should turn white, then you let go and it returns to pink. Now, if you're a deer or my dog, you can just sit there and stick your face in there and drink this pond water no problem. And um, I'm sure that they get upset tummies. You know, there's bacteria, there's viruses, there's proteas, there's parasitic worms in this water. But if you get used to it, you know, you can drink this. I would not drink this unless it was an absolute emergency. But there's actually an easy solution. If you can find standing water, you can get clean water with no container in a very primitive survival situation. Let me show you. We're gonna dig a pit and then let the water seep into the pit and then drink the water that's in the pit. It's called a seep well or a gypsy well. And you've probably seen this on some of the survival shows. They just didn't explain what it was or how it worked. Essentially what's gonna happen is that the water is going to flow through the soil particles and fill a little shallow trench. Now that should remove most, if not all, of the pathogens. And so what's in the well is going to be drinkable. Okay, I dug two different seep wells and the soil differed tremendously just in the couple feet. So you see that this one is a lot more sandy and it's definitely seeping. Okay, it's seeping from here, not from the surface. And that's good. The water coming through the soil is going to be as pure as you're gonna get it. And you just have to wait for this to fill up. Okay, let me repeat to you while we're waiting on these holes to fill up with water, that if you're in a desperate situation, drink that water. Go ahead and drink that water. If you have a handkerchief, pass through that. If you don't have a handkerchief, just drink the water. You're probably not gonna have a container to boil it in. Okay, you don't actually have to boil water anyway. It only needs to be about 150, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. By the time it gets to boiling, it's definitely safe to drink. But, you know, anything, just get water in your body. When I was in the tropics, I was so desperate, I was drinking out of streams. And you know what? Yeah, I got sick. I got dysentery. And it went away in a few days. It's horrible. I mean, you have massive bowel evacuations in the middle of the night. But the key is dehydration will kill you, okay? Bacterial, viral protease, uh, helminth, those are worms, those infections, uh, they might kill you, but it's gonna take a lot longer, okay? I teach microbiology. I've taught it for 15 years for health students, okay? Pre-nursing, pre-med, pre-dental, and we talk about this stuff all the time, okay? We talk about the dangers of dehydration, number one, and secondly, the microbes that can be in water that can make you sick, okay? If I had to, I would stick my face in this pond right now and drink it. I'm not desperate yet, so I can wait for these seep wells to basically fill up with cleaner water. Another thing about these seep wells is you don't wanna drink 
after a rainstorm because the rain could wash off fecal material from the land and it seeps into there and then you don't want that. Um, the other thing is if wild animals are coming and pooping in it or drinking out of it, I wouldn't drink out of it. I would just dig as many as you need for one day's use and just drink from it that one day or if you have a container, store the water for usage another day. All right, let's talk about what would happen if you did drink this water and you did get sick. This has happened to me. You basically get diarrhea and you may have some vomiting and you just keep drinking more water. Diarrhea is your body's way of getting rid of the pathogen, getting rid of what's making you sick. And the biggest risk is really dehydration. So just keep drinking, keep drinking, keep drinking. Not drinking is going to make everything much worse. And if you did have anti-diarrheal medication on you, don't use it. You want the diarrhea to get rid of whatever is causing you harm. Okay, so what if you have blood in your diarrhea? That's called dysentery. That's a lot more severe, but still you can survive it, okay? You can survive that for a matter of days, possibly weeks, and it might resolve itself. It might go away. Now, every human is gonna be different. Every human is gonna have a different immune system. They're gonna have different vulnerabilities to different parasites. And essentially, you know, survival is survival. It's not comfortable. It's a matter of life or death. And dehydration will kill you. Again, we need at least a couple quarts of water a day. You can drink your urine once or twice, and it's still not concentrated enough that it's gonna cause harm. Basically get whatever water you can into your body. You're going to die without it. It's only been a couple minutes, and you can see that I probably have about a half a cup of water in that one, maybe a little more than a half a cup of water in this one. And you just wanna sit back and relax and let those accumulate with water, and then you can drink them in just a little while. Be patient. Here we have a ditch with really nasty murky water. I definitely would not drink that water. But what I would do is try to dig a seep well right there and go ahead and give that a couple hours to fill it and I'd drink that. Here's another one and if you're lucky when you're down in there you might find a frog, you might find a fish, even a snake, a turtle, anything. Go ahead and eat that. Worms while you're out there. But again just find a place next to a body of water that's all contaminated and go ahead and dig your well and then drink from that. Okay, here's our river cane straw that I just cut. It's still green, and there's a hole going all the way through. And to make this into a filter, now this is not going to sterilize or purify the water. It's just gonna basically get rid of the silt and the sand and make it taste a little bit better. Okay, so we're gonna plug one end with some dry grass. And then from the top, we're gonna load it with this charcoal that I've just basically pulverized into a powder. then pack it with some sand. And again, this is not purifying the water in any microbiological sense. It is simply going to get rid of some of the silt and sand and muck and make it taste just a little bit better. Then you can top off with some more grass. And now we have a basically filter, okay? A several stage water filter straw. All right, as you can see, these have filled up. I'd say there's a couple of cups of water easy, and I'm gonna use my little straw just to make sure that, you know, I'm not gonna get a mouthful of silt and sand. So let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's just the charcoal. The black is the charcoal. But that's totally drinkable. That's totally potable water. With a couple of these seep wells, you can get quarts of water a day. And this charcoal filter is probably a good idea just to keep any silt or uh, particles out of your mouth. Another thing is to reduce dehydration. To reduce the rate of dehydration, I'd actually lay in that water. Uh, some people might think that you absorb water through your skin and that you could hydrate by just being in the water. It's not significant, so that's not going to work. Um, you basically would just reduce your sweating, reduce your body temperature, and reduce your water loss by being in the pond while you're waiting for these wells to fill. <laughs> All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Naked and Not Afraid.